क्वेश्चन आंसर ऑन रूलर्स एंड बिल्डिंग्स हाउ इज दी एट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द आर क्यू एट सो इन ट्राबी एट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर द रूफ डोर एंड विंडोज वर मेड बाई प्लेसिंग अर्जेंटल बीम अक्रॉस टू वर्टिकल बीम्स इन आर्क्यूएट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ आर्किटेक्चर द वेट ऑफ द सुपर स्ट्रक्चर अब द डोर एंड विंडोज वॉज कैरिड बाई दी आर्क वॉट इज द शिकारा सो शिकारा इज द टॉप मोस्ट पॉइंटेड पोर्शन ऑफ टेम्पल वॉट इज पियथ्रा डूरा सो पियथ्रा डूरा रेफर्स टू द कलर्ड हार्ड स्टोन प्लेस इन डिप्रेशन कार्ड इन टू मार्बल और सैंड स्टोन विच क्रिएट ब्यूटिफुल ऑर्नेट पैटर्न वॉट आर द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ मुगल चहार और चार बाग गार्डन सो द मुगल चार बाग कंसिस्ट ऑफ फोर गार्डन फोर गार्डन चार मीन्स फोर So these gardens are placed within rectangular wall enclosures and divided into four quarters by artificial channels. How did a temple communicate the importance of a king? So kings usually constructed temples to demonstrate their devotion for God first of all, and then their power and wealth. So here we can mention that uh, Raja Rajeshwara Temple, which was built by the king Raja Raj Deva. for the worship of the god raja rajeshwaram so it is noticeable here that the names of the ruler and the god were very similar the king looks the god name but he took the takes the god name because it was auspicious and he wanted to appear like a god and through the rituals of worship in the temples one god that is raja raj deva honored another that is raja rajeshwara so kings usually constructed large temples the other lesser deities in the temple were gods and goddesses of the allies and the subordinates of the ruler so the temple was a miniature model of the world ruled by the king and his allies so as they worshiped their deities together in the royal temples it seemed as if they bowed the just rule of the gods on earth an inscription in shah jahan's diwan e khas in delhi stated if there is a paradise on earth it is here it is here it is here how was this image created so shah jahan diwan e khas was designed in such a way that it fused together in a grand harmonious synthesis it was carefully planned it was placed within a large courtyard behind the emperor's throne there were a series of pietra dura inlays so it depicted the legendity or you can say the legend of god orpheus playing the lute so diwan e khas was aimed to communicate the king's justice would treat the high and the low as equals creating a world where all could live together in harmony so the diwan e khas reflected the image of a paradise in itself how did the mughal court suggested that everyone the rich and the poor the powerful and the weak receive justice equally from the emperor so the diwan e uh, aam of the mughal court suggested that justice was made in all in equal way the construction of shah jahan audience uh, hall was designed to communicate that the king justice was equal for the high and the low both of them so it aims uh, or it was it aimed to create world where all could live together in harmony there was no difference between the rich and the poor in the emperor's court what role did the did yamuna play in the layout of the new mughal city at shah jahan abad So the river Yamuna had a very significant role in the layout of new Mughal city at Shah Jahan Abad. Shah Jahan preferred the river front garden in the layout of the Taj Mahal. He developed the same architectural form as a means to control the access that the nobles had to the river. So in the new city of Shah Jahan Abad, the imperial palace also commanded the river front. Only the most favored nobles were given access to the river. Other than those had to construct their homes in the in the city away from the river yamuna so it expanded the layout of the city the rich and powerful construct large houses today in what ways were the construction of kings and their courtiers different in the past so the rich and powerful construct large houses today but these houses are not the same as those of the kings and their courtiers in the past the houses of the kings and their courtiers were big structures with big backyard with the courtyard thick walls doomed roofs huge pillars 
big gardens and well decorated halls but today houses have no courtyards um, no garden nor thick walls nor doomed roofs so in many ways these are inferior to those of the kings and their courtier houses so here uh, in book if you see there is a figure how could that building be constructed faster today the answer would be that such buildings were usually constructed as a matter of pride in old days so it was very difficult to construct them but they were made possible with the help of skilled masons and laborers and the will of the king such buildings took a very long time and a number of laborers to be constructed but now as technologies has have advanced we have many facilities good equipment tools which can construct huge buildings very easily and in no time find out whether there is a statue of a memorial to a great person in your village or town why was it placed there what purpose does it serve now you can just say that there is a very very busy um, you know intersection or a chalk in my village we find there a statue of uh, subhash chandra bose you can also say that it is uh, baba ambedkar or gandhi ji statue hence this chalk is known as subhash chalk or gandhi chalk or you know rajiv chalk nehru chalk or like that so subhash chandra bose i'm i'm adding subhash chandra bose but you can replace it with your choice of the uh, person you 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 have in your town or village so subhash chandra bose was a great person that he dared to challenge the british empire by forming his own army he is now no more but his statue is there to inspire us its purpose is to encourage the youth to do something different and challenging visit and describe any park or garden in your neighborhood in what ways it is similar to or different from the gardens of the moguls so the gardens of moguls gardens were spread over a very large area there were a large variety of flowers they were well decorated and protected but the garden in my neighborhood is not so large everyone has easy access to the garden so the flowers are not safe therefore we don't find any similarity why was limestone cement used in construction of large structures so limestone cement was very very high quality cement which when mixed with stone chips hardened into concrete and this made construction of large structures easier and faster how did the persian court chronicles describe the sultan so the persian court chronicles describe the sultan as the shadow of god named the ruler who won universal respect for constructing a large reservoir just outside delhi a kona for sultan iltutmish what are the special features of humayun's tomb so it was first of all humayun tomb it has a central towering dome and it has a tall gateway that is called pishtak what was mahamandapa so it was the main hall in the temple where dances were performed in the temple built by king rajaraj deva so rajarajeshwara temple is the answer when was the tomb of Hanu, uh, this uh, humayu built so it was built between this is not hanuman this is humayu 1562 to 1571 who constructed the kendriya mahadeva temple or kandariya so king dhangadeva of chandel dynasty constructed kandariya this is kandariya mahadeva temple where was shah jahan's capital in the early years of his reign so it was agra initially what is the special feature of fatehpur sikri akbar's capital the special feature is many of the buildings show the influence of architect architecture style of gujarat and malwa named the king who invaded sri lanka whom did he defeat so king uh, shri mara shri vallabha he defeated the king senawan what were havelis so they were large mansions of the pert merchants havelis how did kings win the praise of their subjects so they won the praise of their subjects by building structures meant for public activity such as the temples mosques tanks or wells uh, caravans uh, caravansarais and bazaars what type of structures were built by king and their officers between 8th and 18th century so during this period kings and their officers they built two kind of structures first is forts palaces garden residences and towns and the second one the structure meant for public activity like the temple mosques tanks wells the caravansarais and bazaars now 
write a short note on Kandariya Mahadeva temple. So the Kandariya Mahadeva temple did, it was dedicated to Lord Shiva. It was con constructed in 999 by the king Dhangadeva of Chandira dynasty. The temple had an ornamented gateway that led to an entrance. So it had a main hall known as Mahamandapa where dances were performed. So the image of the chief deity was kept in main shrine known as Garbhagriha. So this was the place of ritual worship where only the king and his uh, kith and kin gathered. Throw light on how the construction of Raja Rajeshwara temple was very difficult task. So the Raja Rajeshwara temple was built in early 11th century. It had the tallest shikra amongst the temples of its time. It cons its construction was very difficult task. There were no cranes in those days. So the 90 ton stone for the top of shikra was too heavy to lift manually. It was impossible at that time. So the architects built an inclined path to the top of the temple, placed in the boulder on, uh, on rollers and rolled it all the way to the top. So the path started more than 4 km away so that it would not be too steep. And this was dismantled after the temple was built. In what phase do you think the policies of Rajendra I and Mahmud of Ghazni were a product of their time? How are the actions of the two rulers different? So the king Rajendra uh, looted the temples of the defeated rulers and seized prized statues from them. You see, these statues in uh, decoration of uh, Shiva Templar, then he did, he used these and then he built in his capital in early 11th century. Sultan Mahmud of Ghazni was a contemporary of Rajendra I. He destroyed and looted the temples of defeated kings in order to win credit as a great hero of Islam. Uh, then King Rajendra I constructed temples while Mahmud of Ghazni destroyed it. In this way, their actions were very, very much different from one another. Write a brief note on the Chahar Bagh or Char Bagh built by Mughal rulers. So the Mughal emperors were very much interested in literature, art and architecture. Babur in his autobiography, he has actually described his interest in planning and lay, laying out uh, formal gardens placed within rectangular wall enclosures and divided into four quarters by artificial channels. So these gardens were called Chahar Bagh, four gardens because of their symmetrical division into quarters. Beginning with Akbar, some of the most beautiful Chahar Bagh were constructed by Jahangir and Shah Jahan in Kashmir, Agra and Delhi. So when was Humayu's tomb built? What are its special features? So Humayu tomb was built between 1562 and 1571. The main features were the central towering dome and the tall gateway known as Pishtak became an important aspect of Mughal architecture. This tomb architecture was first visible in Humayun's tomb. So the tomb was placed in the center of huge formal char bag land built in the tradition known as eight paradises or hasht bihisht or central hall surrounded by eight rooms. The building was constructed with red sandstone edge with white marble. Give an account of Shah Jahan's audience halls. So Shah Jahan's audience halls were specially constructed to resemble a mosque. The pedestal on the which his throne was placed was frequently described as the Qibla, the direction faced by Muslims at prayer, since everybody faced the direction when court was in session. So the idea of the king as a representative of God on earth was suggested by these architectural features. So the construction of Shah Jahan audience hall aimed to communicate that the king's justice would treat the high and the low as both are equal, creating a world where all could live together in harmony and tranquility. Who were involved in building of Qutub Minar? So Qutub Minar is a five-story high building. Or you can say it's it's a building, but it's a you know simple structure, very um, the lengthwise it's, it's higher. So the first floor was con constructed by Kutubuddin Aibak and rest by Iltutmish around 1229. Over the year, it was damaged by lightning and earthquakes and repaired by Alauddin Khilji, Muhammad Tughlaq, Firoz Shah Tughlaq and Ibrahim Lodi. How can you say that Mughal rulers adopted regional architectural style in their construction of their buildings? You can you have to explain with the examples. So Mughal rulers were skilled in adapting regional architectural styles in the construction of their buildings. For instance, 
In Bengal, the local rulers had developed a roof that was designed to resemble a thatched hut. The Mughals liked this Bangla dome and used it uh, their architecture as their architecture. In Akbar's capital at Fatehpur Sikri, many of the buildings show the influence of architectural styles of Gujarat and Malwa. Describe how Shah Jahan adapted the riverfront garden in the layout of the Teg, uh, Taj Mahal. This is Taj Mahal. So the Taj Mahal is the grandest architecture accomplishment of Shah Jahan reign. Actually, it's India's best crea creations. So he adopted the five uh, the riverfront garden in its in his uh, layout. In its layout, so the white marble mausoleum was placed on a terrace by the edge of the river and garden was to its south. So Shah Jahan developed this architecture form as a means to control the access that nobles had to the river. What is the main feature of Shah Jahan's new city of Shah Jahanabad? So Shah Jahan constructed a new city, new city, he named it as Shah Jahanabad in Delhi. So in this city, the imperial palace commanded the riverfront. Only specially favored nobles like his oldest, oldest son, the Dara Shiko, was given access to the river. All others have to construct their homes in the city away from Yamuna River. Compare the reason why temples were built and destroyed. See, first of all, king built temples to show their devotion to God and power and wealth, to their to just to uh, showcase. Now, King Raja Raj, this Raja Rajeshwara, but built Raj Rajeshwara temple for the um, worship of God Raja Rajeshwara. Here the name of the king and god are similar. The king took the god's name because it was auspicious and he wanted to appear like a god. So the largest temples were built, usually built by the kings, where while the other lesser deities in the temples were gods and goddesses of the allies and subordinate of the ruler. So the temple was a miniature model of the world ruled by king and his allies. So as they worshipped the deities together in, together in the royal temples, it seemed as if they bought the just rule of the gods on the earth. The king built temples, but when they attack, when they are attacked, or they attack one another kingdoms, they often targeted these buildings. So in the early 9th century, when the uh, Pandyan king uh, Srimara Srivallabha invaded Sri Lanka and defeated King Sena I, he seized all the valuables such as the statue of Buddha made entirely of gold and other golden images from various monasteries. So King Sena II took revenge of this. He invaded Mathurai. The capital of Pandyas in order to restore the gold structure of Buddha. In the same way, when in the early 11th century, the Chola king Rajendra I uh, built a Shiva temple in his capital. So he filled it with prize statues seized from the defeated ruler. Sultan Mahmud Ghazni of Ghazni not only seized the value of the temple, but he destroyed them. He did it in order to show some credit. So this uh, ruler displayed their political might, or you can say the rulers wanted to do uh, portray or display their party, political um, might and, and military successes by attacking and looting the places of worship of defeated rulers.